أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Just before we start, just want to mention one or two things about our speaker. He comes from Toronto. He's one of our regular speakers, so I'm sure he's familiar to uh, many of you. But for those who don't know who Sheikh Shabir is, he's, um, he specializes in comparative faith. Um, he's, he's got an undergraduate studies uh, degree in biblical literature, which was followed by, a, by an MA in Quranic studies, and now he's doing a PhD in Quranic studies too. Uh, tonight's lecture is called the uh, Dignity of Good Manners and Respect for God's Creation. Over to you, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, nahmanu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'afiru wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu bihi ta'ala min shururi anfusina wa sayyati a'malina ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم ارسله الله بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي عساه ما يطيع الله ورسوله فقد رشد وما يعص الله ورسوله فانه لا يضر الا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا in this uh, talk i want to address the dignity of good manners and uh, the respect that Muslims should have for Allah's creation. I will speak for about uh, 40 minutes or so, and then take your questions. So be ready with uh, the best questions you can uh, address tonight, or any question really. Uh, Brother Kashif has mentioned that uh, I have a strong interest in uh, comparative religion. So even though my talk is not about that issue, uh, if you do have questions of that nature, I'd be glad to, ask them, to answer them as well. Questions regarding the fiqh of Islam, you have other scholars to um, uh, address your questions to, Sheikh Salim Al-Amri and others, so we'll leave those uh, aside. But questions regarding my topic tonight and regarding comparative religion, I'll be glad to uh, try and answer for you. Now let's start with respect for God's creation. Allah Azawajal has created everything for a purpose. And according to the Quran, we should not think that Allah has created anything abatha. Do they think? Do you think? Do you think that Allah has created you uh, for, for no reason, Abbasan? And that you are not going to return to him? Allah is uh, transcendent. He is the Malik, the King. Al-Haq, the truth. So Allah does not create things out of sport and play. He did not create the heavens and the earth and that which is between them, la'iba. He did not create these for some fun. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of the makhluqat for good reasons. Some of the reasons might be obvious to us. Some of the reasons might not be known to us. But because of our limited knowledge, we respect everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. In the Quran in Surah al sajda Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, or describes himself as, الَّذِي أَحْسَنَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقَ He is the one who made good or perfected everything that he has created. In uh, Surah uh, Al-Mulk, Surah 67 of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes his creation of the heavens. And he says that if you look up into the heavens, you will not be able to find any defect, any tafawut. Farji al-Basr, that return the vision. Have another look. 
Alta Ramen Futur. Do you see any, any, any kind of defect? The vision will return, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. You will keep looking and looking until you are tired, but you will not be able to find a defect in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Related to this is a hadith that uh, Sheikh uh, Salim al-Amri just taught me, a hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made everything good. And this, of course, is related to the ayah which I have just uh, mentioned. At the same time, we recognize that some of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are capable of committing wrong, of doing evil. And for this reason, we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from such evils. As we pray in Surah uh, Al-Falaq, Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq. Min sharri ma khalaq. Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of daybreak from the evil of that which he has created. Allah himself is not evil. But he creates things which are capable of doing evil. And so we seek refuge in him from the evil of that which he has created. It is important then that we have a balanced view of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people do not have that balanced view. You might find on the one extreme, there is a worship of the created things of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah warns us about this. In Surah 41, Surah Fusilat, لَا تَسْجُدُوا لِلشَّمْسِ وَلَا لِلْقَمَرِ وَاسْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُنْ do not prostrate to the sun and the moon, but prostrate to the one who has created all of these. That is Allah Azza wa Jal. On the one hand, people go towards that extreme of worshipping the created things. In modern times, there is a celebration of the idea of the earth goddess. You realize that? Movies like the Avatar, actually promote this idea of Gaia, of Mother Earth, and you should worship Mother Earth. There is so much of a concern for protecting the environment and saving the natural resources and uh, preserving the balance in the ecosystem that people go to that one extreme. They want to worship Mother Earth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings it all into perspective for us. These are the created things of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want good from them, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the good. On the other extreme, you will find even some Muslims being so totally afraid of the created things of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they go to measures which are contrary to our religious teachings. People are afraid of jinns and shayateen. They are afraid of evil spirits. They're afraid of voodoo magic. They're afraid that somebody has done some jadu on them. But our solution always is to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know that Allah has power over all of these things. These are the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We respect the created things of Allah. We recognize that some of them are capable of great evils. But we know that Allah, al khaliq he is the one who has control over all of these things. So no one can harm us unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives that permission. That is the yaqeen a Muslim must have. No one can bring us any good unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permits that in his qadr. So once the Muslim has that faith, a Muslim would not be afraid of any of these things. If he senses some evil or apprehends some harm, he makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the dua is taught to us. A'udhu bi rabbil falaq. I seek refuge in the Lord of daybreak. Min sharri ma khalaq. From the evil of that which he has created. Wa min sharri ghasiqin idha waqab. And from the darkness, the evil of the darkness, when it overspreads. <coughs> 